So Python 3.14 is now released and one of the main new features is template strings which we're going to dive into in this video. Now these are quite similar to F strings but they have some advantages over those. We're going to dive into that very soon. And I'm going to add this video to a Python standard library playlist that's available in the comments. And that contains some useful but slightly more advanced tips for working with Python. And if you have any suggestions for that, let me know. And if you'd like to see a video on any further Python 3.14 features, let me know as well. And let's get started. Now template strings are a new mechanism for custom string processing. And they share a familiar syntax with F strings. But unlike F strings, they return an object that represents the static and interpolated parts of the string. And that's as opposed to an F string, which just returns a string. So let's have a look at that to start with. I have a very simple file here containing some code. And currently we have an F string called F. So this is very simple. We have a variable called cups and that's set to the number three. And the string says I have had three cups of coffee and that is 240 milligrams of caffeine. And we have these interpolated expressions as part of the F string. And apparently this is true. A cup of coffee has on average 80 milligrams of caffeine. Let me know in the comments if that's not correct. And on the terminal at the bottom here, we're gonna run the UV run command and the name of this is main.py. And you can see it outputs that string here. Now that's an F string. What is a template string or a T string? That is the new addition in Python 3.14. And how does it differ from an F string? Now what I'm gonna do is just copy this and we can see the same expression here, but instead of an F string, we're gonna create a variable called template. And instead of this F prefix, we can use T to create a template string. Now you can see VS Code is complaining. What I'm gonna do is update the interpreter at the bottom. So if we select Python 3.14, you can see that this error goes away and we can output this template to the terminal. Let's try running this again with UV run. And you can see this time we have not a string being printed, but instead a template object. So that's the first key difference here. The F string returns a string with the interpolated parts filled in. The template that's returned from a T string is different, it's an object, and that's a new object that's been added to 3.14. And to see that, we can copy and paste some code here. We're gonna print the type of F and the type of template, and let's rerun this. And you can see at the bottom, the F string gives us back a normal string object, a string data type. On the other hand, the template is returning this new template lib dot template object. So what is this all about? What's the benefit of a template object? If we go back to the documentation, you can see here that template objects, they provide access to the static and interpolated parts of a string before they are combined. And we can iterate over a template instance to access the parts in order. Now this is different to an F string. The interpolated parts are combined immediately and it returns a new string. That's not the way that templates work. And we'll see why that's beneficial potentially in some scenarios very soon. But as it says here, we can iterate over these template instances. So let's go back to VS Code and I'm gonna remove some of these print statements we have. And what we're gonna do is iterate over the template so we can create a for loop here. And let's call the variable part. So for each part in the template, we can then print that part to the terminal. I'm gonna save this and let's clear the terminal and rerun main.py. And you can see each part printed on a new line. So we have the first part of the template string that says I've had, and that's at the top here. And then what we have here for the number of cups is this interpolation object. And that gives us the value three that was passed in here via this variable called cups, as well as the expression that generated that value. And there's a couple of extra arguments here that we're gonna skip over for now. And after that interpolated part, we have another raw string here. And you can see that in this text on the next line. And finally, we have another interpolation, or not finally, second last, we have another interpolation here for this expression cups multiplied by 80. So you can see again, the value is 240 and the expression that generated that value, the interpolated expression is the second argument here. And we're gonna see how this is useful because we can actually work with the interpolated parts and we can actually adapt them and change them and sanitize them. We'll see examples of that later on. And one thing I want to show just before we move on here is that we can take the template object and we can access the values of the interpolated expressions. And we can get that with the values attribute. And if I copy that to the line below, we also have a template.strings attribute. And that gives us back the raw strings that were part of the template string. So let's clear the terminal and execute this. And you can see the values. That's a tuple with all of the interpolated values of 3 and 3 multiplied by 80, which is 240. And for the strings here, we get the raw strings that were part of the expression. And one last attribute that you might want to know about is template.interpolations. That's gonna give you back the interpolation objects that are part of this template string. And you can see that on the bottom line. 
So if you're processing a template string, you can access the interpolations and the values and do any kind of sanitization of those that you want. And the reason for that is that template strings, unlike F strings, they provide a programmable string interpolation. So unlike F strings, which immediately produce the string, template strings return a structured template object that can then be processed by custom functions. And that ability to process template strings is where this becomes really useful. And what we're going to do now is look at a toy example from the PEP, the Python Enhancement Proposal. And we're going to look at a SQL example a little bit later on. Now, before we move on, if you're finding this content useful and you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page that's linked just below the video. And if you want to become a member, we've opened up memberships recently. And thank you to everyone that's joined the channel. And also I want to say thank you as we're about to hit 50,000 subscribers as I'm recording this. It's an amazing achievement. Thanks to everybody who has watched any videos and subscribed to the channel. Let's move on and look at processing template strings. And we're going to look at this example from the Python enhancement proposal. It's a pretty simple example. But let's just copy most of this code here and go back to VS Code. And I'm going to replace what we had before with the code from that proposal. So what's going on here? We're importing two new objects as part of Python 3.14, the template and interpolation objects. We've already seen examples of these throughout the video. And we have a function here called lower upper that is designed to work with a template parameter that's passed in. And it should take that template and return ultimately a string after processing the template. Now let's look at the code here. We define an empty list called parts, and then we iterate over each item in the template. And we already saw earlier on that templates are iterable objects. And then we check the instance of each item. Is it an interpolation item or is it something else? And if it's an interpolated item, what we do is we take that item's value and then we convert it to uppercase using the upper function. Otherwise, if the item is not an interpolation, if it's a raw string, we just lowercase that. And in each step, we are appending the item's transformed value to this parts list that we created above the loop. And the final return statement here joins each of the parts that have been added and returns them. Now at the bottom, we've defined this variable called name. What we're going to do now is we're going to print something to the terminal and we're going to call the lower upper function. And remember, this expects to receive a template object as a parameter. So let's create that template object now, and again, we use that familiar syntax, but instead of F, it's a T string that we're going to define. And we're going to pass this in, and let's pass in this string here, hello, and then we can pass in the name from the variable on the line above. Let's save that and go to the terminal. And when we run this program, notice that the casing for these has been transformed. So the hello part, which was initially uppercase, has been transformed to lowercase, and the interpolated value here for world, which was initially lowercase, has been transformed to uppercase. Why is that? It's detecting for each part of the template whether it's an interpolated part. If it is, it's uppercasing it. That's why world is now uppercase. And otherwise, if it's a raw string like hello, it's going to convert it to lowercase and ultimately it's returning those. So what this allows us to do is process the interpolated parts of the string. And even though this is a dummy example, it showcases what you can do here. So if we have a mixed string here and then we interpolate another string, let's say, a raw value here of x, y, z, we can see again that it's going to take the interpolated parts and transform them to uppercase, as you can see at the bottom, and any raw strings are lowercase. So I hope that makes sense. That's a dummy example from the proposal, but it does showcase the ability to actually process the interpolated parts of the string, and that's going to be really useful if you're taking, for example, user input, and you want to create some kind of output such as HTML or SQL or something like that. Those come with security risks, but what you can do with template strings is process the input that you've been given and optionally transform that and sanitize it and return a sanitized string that you can actually safely use. That's the benefit of using template strings. And we're going to look at one final example now. This is going to be an SQL based example. So again, let's just clear everything out from here. And we're going to define a function here called render SQL. And the idea behind this function is that it should take a template as a parameter and any interpolated values should be parameterized. In other words, you can transform that into a question mark if you're using the param style of question mark in your SQL dialect. And it's also going to collect the values separately to avoid SQL injection. Now, I'm going to create a dummy example just to showcase this. We're not actually going to use a database, but let's say we have a user ID of 42 and a status of active. We could create a template literal here and you can see it's selecting all from a table called users where the ID is equal to this user ID and we're interpolating that from the variable. 
And let's imagine this is coming from some kind of user input on a web application or something like that. And we also interpolate the status here. So we're checking to get a user with that ID whose status is active. Now we're gonna show what could go wrong here. So I've also created an F string where we directly interpolate and return the string with the values input. Let's clear this out and we're gonna run this. And when we run this, you can see we get the template object for this line of code here. And we get the F string returning the raw string that represents this SQL. Now let's imagine the classic problem of SQL injection. Let's take this status here and let's replace that with something that's potentially malicious and could entirely destroy your user table. So we've set the status to active and then we close off that SQL statement and we then issue a drop table user statement and that would remove the entire table from the database and then we have these two dashes that represent an SQL comment. And that means anything after this, for example, a closing semicolon here to close the statement is gonna be ignored. Let's try and see what is produced here. If we clear the terminal and run main.py, we have our template string above, but notice this select statement here. We select all from users where the ID is 42 and the status is active. And then we close that expression and we issue a drop table users that could potentially destroy your user table, leave you with no users, and you might have some potentially unhappy managers from this process and template strings can help save the day. So let's look at how they can do so. So I'm gonna remove this past statement and paste in some code and we're gonna go over this code just now. Now what this function should return, let's start with that. It should return the sanitized SQL string with the parameters, in other words, the question marks to replace the interpolated values. And it should also return a list of the values that should be parameterized and entered into the query. So we define two lists at the top here. One is called SQL parts and the other is called params. That represents the interpolated values. And then we iterate over the template string that's passed in as a parameter. And if we have a row string, we just append that to the parts. Otherwise, if we have an interpolation object, what we're gonna do is append a question mark that represents that placeholder or that parameterized query. And then to the params that we have here, we append the value of the interpolation that's passed in. And if you're not sure exactly how this should look, we're gonna look at the example in a second and see what values we get back. Otherwise, if we don't have a string or an interpolation, then what we're gonna do is raise a runtime error. And then finally, we generate some SQL by taking the SQL parts and we run that join function to join them up into a single string. And finally, we return that SQL string and we return the parameters as well. Now, if we go down to the bottom where we're printing these values out, what I'm gonna do is call the render SQL function and we pass in our template string here and that gives us back the SQL and the dynamic parameters and we can then print those out to the terminal. So I'm gonna do that just now. Let's remove the existing print statements and we can print out the SQL and the parameters. Let's now save this and go back to the terminal I'm gonna clear this out and if we run main.py, notice the SQL that we get back contains the question mark parameters and that's what we want because that allows us to sanitize the values that are gonna be passed in and you can see the parameters that will be passed in. We have the number 42 for the user ID and we have this string here that represents the status. Now that is gonna be safely handled by the database driver because we're using these question mark placeholders and that's as opposed to the raw F string, which if you executed against your database could wipe out your user table. So these parameters are passed separately to the database library and that allows you to avoid SQL injection. And in the SQL statement here, we've essentially turned the interpolations into bound parameters. Now there's much more we could do with this render SQL function to process a template safely. For example, we're just appending a question mark at the moment. Some dialects use different syntax, different characters for adding parameters. So we could extend this example to produce the correct parameterization at the bottom for the SQL. But I think this example showcases what you can do with templates. You can write functions that process a template and optionally transform values from interpolations into something that can be safely used. And that's especially useful when you have user input and when you're working with things like XML, HTML and SQL. And the core difference between the template string and the F string is that the F string immediately evaluates and returns the string whereas the template string is gonna return this template object that you can later process and perform these kind of transformations and sanitizations. Now let's look at one final example here, and I'm gonna do this quickly because I don't want this video to be too long. What we're gonna demonstrate is that you can actually append one template string to another. So let's say we have the columns user ID and is active, and we have a table called users. We can create two template strings using this T syntax here. So the first one is the selection, 
and in that selection we join up the columns into a list and then we have the table here so we have a raw string from and then we interpolate the value of this table variable and again you can imagine these coming from any source but finally we produce a query which appends the table statement to the selection statement so one template string is being added to another and again we can iterate over this query so for item in query and what we can also do is use Python's new structural pattern matching syntax so we can match on the item that's produced when we iterate over the template string and we can check is the item a string and if it is a string we can just print that to the terminal so we're printing s to the terminal on the other hand we can check if it's an interpolation object and we can call the resulting variable interpolation here and then if that's the case what we do is we take the interpolation object and to access the value of that we use the dot value property so one final time, let's go to the terminal here and we're going to run main.py and you can see the resulting SQL statement. We select these two columns from the users table and what we did was we created a template string for the selection and one for the table and we appended those together, concatenated them to produce this query that we then iterated over as we did before. So we can use these new template strings and interpolation objects and so on inside structural pattern matching statements and inside other Python constructs. And to get the value of an interpolation, we just access the value property. So that's been a whistle stop tour of template strings. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. And if you're finding this content useful and you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. We've got a link to that just below the video and if you want any more of these videos on other features of Python 3.14 let me know in the comments as well. I'm probably going to do some more of these so anything you want to see just give me a shout. And thanks again for watching. See you soon in the next video.